So right, we've got Mark Jake in here again with us, with uh, which is a uh, uh, I want to say Mark's Mark is probably one of the elite investment analysts on Wall Street to the point where his uh, Chaikin uh, power gauge is used by a good portion of Wall Street uh, investment firms. It's very well proven as far as uh, uh, the factors that he uses to uh, identify uh, price movements of stocks. So. I'm not going to take up too much more of Mark's time. Mark, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious again to see the uh, uh, information you can give us. Steve, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. And a special thanks to Becky for handling all of the details that make this uh, webinar experience so seamless for all of us. The title of tonight's webinar is How to Make Money in a Volatile Market. We picked that title in October. Uh, which indeed was volatile as most Octobers are, but guess what? Volatility is over. And that means that the techniques we're going to talk about tonight can be applied in normal markets, the difference being it's a lot easier to make money in regular markets that aren't subject to these volatile swings like we saw in October. The only volatility we're likely to see in the market is going to come out of China, Japan, and Europe in pre-opening activity, and we saw in the last two days that there's latent demand for U.S. stocks. So you have the futures opening lower the last two or three days, and the market has come back and closed up on the day. So that's where the volatility is going to come in. But U.S. equity trading is going to be very different from what it's been in October. So let's start with a, sh a short disclaimer. Chaikin Analytics is not registered as a broker-dealer with any U.S. or state regulatory agency. The stocks we talk about tonight are for educational purposes only. They're not meant to be specific recommendations, although a lot of these stocks are the stocks that I want you to focus on for trades and investments between now and the end of the year. So let's get to the meat of this presentation. What does Chaikin Analytics add the candlestick traders. Now, you've got some great tools. Steve Bigelow is the best. That's why I love partnering him in, with, with him in these webinars. He's presented to our people, and they respond very positively. Obviously, the patterns, the dojis, the hanging man, particularly his T-line, which really is a tool that I've used for over 10 years, a very similar tool. These are fabulous tools for traders. What we add to the equation is the ability to analyze the fundamentals. We're like a GPS for making money. Our Chaikin Power Gauge rating helps you find the winning stocks and the stocks to avoid or use as put candidates. We do that by helping you know the fundamentals without being a research analyst. We help you know the technicals without being a market technician. And we help you profit from a proven quantitative model without having to do the math. And you can't imagine how much money on Wall Street is run using quantitative models. And we've got one of the best there is. And finally, we help you pinpoint profitable entries and exits with check and buy and sell signals. The biggest problem we face in our daily lives, and particularly in our investment trading accounts, is information overload. The key question is right in the middle of this chart. How do you focus in the age of distraction? If you look at Twitter, Facebook, email, LinkedIn, CNBC, you realize how much information you have to process in order to live your lives and to make successful trading decisions. Our answer to information overload is the Chaikin Analytics workstation for both iPad and desktop. The charts that we're going to use as examples in this webinar come from Chaikin Analytics for iPad. It's mobile. You can take it with you if you're on vacation, if you're out of the office. If you need this information to stay up on your holdings, it's there for you. The desktop application is very clearly what a lot of people are going to use as they trade through the day, as they're in the chat rooms. If you're in the Candlestick chat room, you're going to see that very clearly. So that's our solution. 
And as a little teaser for the stocks that we're going to be talking about today, and I believe in educating through example, and to me, repetition is the best way to educate. And the good thing about the stock market is that patterns repeat over and over and over again. And we're going to show you two really powerful patterns. They're simple to understand. And if you master these two patterns, and I guarantee you're going to come away from this webinar understanding them completely, you can make money in volatile markets, non-volatile markets, sideways markets, and trending markets. So here's an example of the type of stock that the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating helps you find. Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, as we'll see, synthesizes 20 factors down to a red, green, yellow rating. That's at the bottom of this one-year chart on Dr. Pepper Snapple. Power gauge rating turned bullish in January. Here's the stock in the beverage group. It's a defensive group. A lot of money went into defensive stocks in October when the market was scaring the pants off people. They went into electric utilities and beverages. So Dr. Pepper and PepsiCo went to new highs. But the power gauge rating found Dr. Pepper back here in January when it went from neutral yellow to green and it stayed green almost entirely full length of 2014. Now right above that is our relative strength indicator. Instead of making you master a lot of numbers, we've converted relative strength over a six month time period into a red green heat map. When the stock has a relative strength that goes from red or underperforming to green or outperforming, you're going to see a very powerful pattern emerge. And then finally, look what happened when Dr. Pepper broke out of this base here around $50, the check in money flow, which is where I made my reputation, was already indicating institutional buying. And that was confirming the breakout. And this is what we're going to be talking about, the, the final piece of the puzzle, the check in buy and sell signals, low risk entry points to help you time your options trades. And by the way, everything we're talking about works in time frameworks all the way from one to three days up to six months for your 401k plan. So it's not meant for day traders per se, but I can tell you from 48 years of experience in trading that the stocks that are likely to go up over the next six months are the ones you want to trade from the long side as a day trader. The stocks that are going down are the stocks you want to be short and you want to avoid trading them from the upside. Don't bottom fish even as a day trader. So the whole Chaikin methodology is about focus. And this slide shows you what happens when you're out of focus. When you're out of focus in the market, you're not seeing things clearly, you're not processing information well, you're not trading well. This is like that sort of eye exam that we all should have every year when the ophthalmologist puts that little lens over there and you say, oh my god, what happened? I can't see a thing. Well, people experience that in the stock market. And focus to me is all about having a plan because a plan is something that leads to conviction. Now, how many of you have read Jack Schwager's Market Wizard books? If you have, please type Y into the question box. But Jack Schwager has done everybody a service because he's interviewed successful traders and hedge fund managers. And there's a common theme in all of his books. Every one of these successful investors and traders has a methodology. They have a plan. They believe in it. It's theirs. They know why it works. And that gives them the conviction to follow that day in and day out. And this webinar is going to show you the Chaikin methodology. It's something that's very easy to follow. In fact, we've developed a five-step methodology. But rather than go step by step, we've encapsulated it in this pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is the Chaikin power gauge rating. Looks very much like the gas gauge on your car. Goes from very bearish to very bullish. Right under that is industry group strength. We think that industry group strength is extremely important and we'll get into that. It's been documented by Zacks, Investors Business Daily, Standard & Poor's, Sam Stovall. Everybody has published white papers showing you how industry group strength aids your bottom line at the end of the year. At the bottom of the pyramid is a hand-picked few technical indicators that work very well with the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, which basically summarizes the fundamental potential for 5,000 stocks. 
Now, when all I had was the check in money flow and the check in oscillator, technical indicators, I knew that fundamental investors drove the market. The big institutions look at fundamentals. They either look at their own analyst work, they look at Wall Street analysts, they have their quant models. Technical indicators, candlestick patterns, check in money flow, relative strength, those are meant to help you track the big footprints of the elephants that drive stock prices. Now, right in the middle, check and buy and sell signals. All through this webinar, you're going to see examples of profitable buy and sell signals. And I'll tell you that I can with confidence cite these as examples because every one of them is a stock that I've either written about in our weekly commentary called Market Insights, where I have a stock of the week, or blogged and tweeted about because I blog and tweet every day on the stock market at Mark Chaikin. You can see what we're saying about stocks. So here's the pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid is the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. It's a reliable indicator of a stock's potential over the next three to six months. It's a simple display, but it's powerful. So don't confuse simple with simplistic. I like to say that the Chaikin Power Gauge is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And the reason I say that is because the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating distills 20 factors grouped into four components so they make sense to you, you understand what they're all about, that give you a clear-cut summary of a stock's potential over the next three to six months. And there's a proven record of success. The track record is on our website. Uh, we've got back-tested results, but we've got four years of real-time results, and you're going to see examples of that in the balance of this webinar. So 85% of this rating is fundamental. And anybody who tells you that you can trade solely with technicals without knowing anything about the fundamentals is doing you a disservice. There's someone who does a great job with relative strength who was quoted in the Wall Street Journal two months ago. And he said, I don't give a hoot about fundamentals. All I care about is the relative performance. Well, good luck to him. He's got a great long-term track record. But I'm here to tell you that if you understand the fundamentals behind a stock, and you don't have to be an analyst, we do the heavy lifting. But if you know why Southwest Air is going up, if it passes the smell test, you're going to have conviction. And that's going to enable you to take advantage of these great buy and sell signals we're going to look at, take advantage of Steve Bigelow's candlestick signals. You're going to be much more focused on what you need to focus on, which is timely exits and entries. So just to summarize, the financials are what a Warren Buffett or a Graham and Dodd would look at. These are the core underpinnings for every stock. Price to sales ratio, free cash flow, price to book value, all standard measures and they all equal 35% of our model. Earnings, Jim Cramer looks at that. Technicals, a lot of people look at that. Investors Business Daily, these are all proprietary Chaikin technicals. They make up 15% of the model, but they make a big difference. And then finally, expert opinions. And this is what's lacking in a lot of Wall Street quantumental or fundamental or quantitative models. They've been built by MIT quants who throw what I call quant spaghetti on the walls and everything looks great in the back testing, but it doesn't reflect real world activity. What are the analysts actually saying and doing with their ratings on a stock? What are the insiders are doing? If the insiders are buying and you think you know why insiders buy, type Y into the question box because this is one of the underrated indicators. Insiders are extremely well compensated, golden parachutes, big compensation packages, stock options. If they take out their wallet and write a check and buy more of their own stock, they do it for just one reason, because they think the stock is going up, and they think it's going up now because they don't have to buy the stock. They're doing it voluntarily. And finally, short interest, the short sellers, the smartest people in the room, my good friend Chris Castroviejo, who I'm staying with here in Palm Beach, likes to say that uh, the short sellers are the smartest people in the room. They're paid to find fraud and overvaluation. Pretty tough to make money on the short side in a five-and-a-half-year bull market. And Christopher's summation of Jim Chanos, who's probably the best long-term short seller, is Jim may be early, but he's rarely wrong. And in fact, he was early on China, but China tanked a year and a half ago. So this is an eclectic model. 
It finds a lot of different ways to like a stock. It's not religious. Warren Buffett, I would categorize as a religious investor, value-oriented, although he deviated a bit when he paid the all-time high price to buy all of Heinz. But the financial metrics are his baby. Price to sales ratio, we're going to focus on that, and then we're going to move on. Bob Arnott used to be the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Portfolio Management. He now heads a firm called Rafi. Rafi manages $160 billion based on factors like this. He was interviewed in AAII, the American Association of Individual Investor Magazine, a month and a half ago. And he said, my secret sauce for 14 years has been price to sales ratio. If you pay too much for a dollar of revenue, you're on a high wire act. I figured that out with my team four and a half years ago. That's why it's one of the key factors in the check and power gauge rating. And rather than go into the back-tested statistics, the best validation of the Chaikin Power Gauge rating is a partnership that we entered into with NASDAQ on April 1st after back-testing the Chaikin Power Gauge rating for over three months at their quant facility in Rockville, Maryland. NASDAQ said, this really works, and we launched three NASDAQ Chaikin co-branded power indexes, large cap, small cap, and dividend achievers on April 1st. All three of these indexes are beating their NASDAQ benchmarks. That, to me, is the best endorsement I can show you about the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. And you really have to believe in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating to get maximum benefit out of the disciplines we're now going to dive into. So we've categorized two patterns, classic bull and classic bear. We're using Southwest Air LUV as our example of a classic bull. Power gauge rating is bullish. The price is trending up. Relative to the performance to the market is strong. That's absolutely critical. Stands on its own, as we'll see in a minute, as a standalone indicator. Check and money flow, which measures the big institutions and what they're doing, should be positive. And then we look for a buy signal to give us an entry point. We don't want to be like Dr. John, one of my favorite New Orleans blues singers, who's wrote that song called I've Been in the Right Place, but it must have been the wrong time. And that's what check and buy signals are meant to do, to put you in the right place at the right time. So let's look at Southwest Air in depth after we've looked at a chart that I want you to deeply embed in your memory. 92 years ago, Richard Wyckoff, who was the top market analyst of his day, theorized an idealized way that stocks moved up and down. He called it the Wyckoff accumulation and distribution patterns. Wyckoff is being taught today at Golden Gate University. Hank Pruden is one of the only people who teaches a course in technical analysis at the college level. Very savvy market analysts are using Wyckoff. It starts with accumulation. You can see the patterns. They're going to repeat over and over again in the bullish examples that you're going to see. The reason I put this chart in here is twofold. A, I've seen this chart before. Stan Weinstein, who wrote the professional tape reader, put, wrote a book on how to buy and sell stocks. He incorporated a chart like this. He borrowed it from Mansfield, who borrowed it from Wyckoff. I found it on stockcharts.com. The second reason I do this is because it gives me the confidence to sit here on a webinar and passionately tell you that these techniques really work because they've been working for a hundred years. They're based on human nature, fear and greed surfacing in the market, just like we saw in October with that enormous V-shaped bottom. Fear was in the streets. And as Warren Buffett has often said, you want to be greedy when people are fearful. And that's what we saw in October. So keep this pattern in your mind as we look at Southwest Air. So here's a one-year chart of Southwest Air from Chaikin Analytics or iPad. At the bottom is the power gauge rating. You can do your own, what I call, empirical backtest. You can decide if the power gauge rating works for you. It's been bullish on Southwest Air for 15 months. The stock's been outperforming the market that whole time. How do we know that? Because the relative strength indicator is green. Don't have to master a lot of number tables. If it's green, it's outperforming the market. And look what happens, just as with Dr. Pepper, when Southwest Air breaks out of a base 
and the base actually goes back beyond this chart. It was at 16, but then there was another breakout at around 19 and a half. Taken money flow shows that the institutions were buying that breakout. Now what you've got to do is focus on the taken signals to get you into your initial position and to get you to average up. This approach will encourage you to do best practices, which is to average up. And every successful Wall Street trader, from the specialists to the upstairs traders, will tell you that averaging down is a loser's game. Now, I was actually shocked today when Jim Cramer on CNBC said one of his cardinal rules is to never pay more than your entry price for a stock. I think he's dead wrong. You want to average up. You want to get into stocks like Southwest Air early, and our discipline will do that for you. Bullish power gauge, outperforming the market, strong check and money flow, and then use these low-risk entry points to add to your position. If you're a swing trader, they're fabulous for two- to four-week entry points. And here's a tip-off. Here's a pattern. Take this away. It's a bonus. Check and money flow measures buying and selling pressure over a 21-day period. Normally, it'll go red when the stock trades down, as it did here in April and in a big way in October. But when a stock trades down for an 8- to 10-day period and this 21-day check and money flow stays green or positive, that's a very powerful indication that the institutions are not sellers. They're net buyers. And this pattern repeats over and over again. And when you see it, jump on it. Uh, because it is a really powerful indication that this stock is probably going to explode on the upside, assuming that we stay in an uptrend. So here we have two examples. A buy signal in late July at a price of about 28 with price acceleration to the upside. And then a second buy signal that didn't work as well, although it worked for four days because we were in a waterfall decline in the market. And in this case, Southwest sold down to this lower volatility band. This is somewhat akin to a Keltner channel for those technicians out there. It's based on a 21-day exponential average. But look at the difference here. In late July, money flow was positive. In late September, when that buy signal triggered, money flow was negative. If you're in a waterfall decline, if the market's volatile, you want to give a stock room to breathe. If you're in a sharp uptrend, you're above this long-term triple double smooth 200-day exponential average, you want to use any excuse in the world to buy that stock. And Southwest Air has made new highs. Now, I talked about fundamentals needing to pass the smell test. Why has Southwest Air been such a strong stock? Two reasons. Their single biggest variable cost is jet fuel, and we all know what's happening to the price of gasoline and jet fuel is going down. That's helped their bottom line. Secondly, AirTrans, they bought it two and a half years ago, had international routes. Love was all domestic. They've consolidated it. They now fly to Europe, Canada, and Latin America. Big routes that UAL used to have a monopoly on. Southwest Air is now competitive. So it passes the smell test from a fundamental point of view. And until the price of petroleum skyrockets again, this stock is going to continue going up. Now let's look at the classic bear. Here we're using Pandora as our poster child. The exact opposite, bearish power gauge rating. We see that at the bottom. Price trending down, weaker than the market. Check and money flow is red, indicating that institutions are selling it. Now you look for a sell signal in check and analytics to buy puts or go short. Signals don't work all the time. Think Two-thirds is a great batting average, and you'll be very happy with what you're going to get. Now let's look at Wyckoff again. Here's the downside. How many of you have seen stocks that you own or were trading from the long side do this in the last year and a half? If you were in cloud computing stocks, small cap biotech, if you're in certain 3D printing stocks, if you're in Netflix, you've seen this pattern before. Distribution, breakdown rally up to where it broke down, and so forth. The Chaikin methodology, although it wasn't designed to do that, finds these inflection points and helps position you. Add in Steve Bigelow's candlestick patterns, and you've got the complete package. So let's look at a classic bear. Diamond offshore, oil machinery drilling services, to, even after a decline of 
50%, it's got a $5 billion market cap, just happens to be in the wrong industry group. How do we know that? Because right here on the left side of the chart, we summarize the strength of the industry group based on power gauge ratings. So technicals are weak, industry group is weak, and the Chaikin power gauge rating is negative. Now when relative strength is also negative, when it's red and not green, we say that the market agrees with the model. And when the market agrees with the model, you get price acceleration. In this case, it's to the downside. That's one of the two concepts that I want you to take away from this webinar. In order to make money in Wall Street, the market has to agree with you. No matter how you approach your buy decisions, whether it's technical, fundamental, or quantitative, if the market disagrees with you, you're going to lose money. It's either dead money or worse. And the only person I know who has the patience to have dead money is Warren Buffett. He'll sit with IBM and Coca-Cola till the end of time, or he'll finagle a great deal where he swaps his Procter & Gamble stock for a battery company because he really thinks Procter & Gamble is peak. Most of us don't have five to ten years to wait for our investments to pay off, and if you're traders, you barely have five to ten days. The key takeaway from this chart is a classic bear happens when the market agrees with the model. When both the market and the model are bearish, the odds of that stock going down are very, very high. The odds of it going up are de minimis. So here's a stock that we've been using for over a year in these webinars as our classic bear, Whole Foods. Great place to shop. It's been a terrible stock. Five quarters in a row of disappointing earnings. Every time they did that, the stock gapped down. It was, it was a three-month recurring event. But look what happened here. We had a base from April to October in the 35-38 area. Finally, Whole Foods got their act together and reported a quarter that beat analyst expectations. So patterns recur, but every good thing comes to an end. The bottom line here is, though, we had four short sale recommendations in our market insights based on the fact that signals like this occurred right before a Whole Foods earnings report. In this case, it's a relative strength sell signal. Relative strength is weaker than the market. It rallies up pulls back down below its 21-day average. All these signals are documented on our website. Put out a sell recommendation in late April ahead of the earnings report. Stock gap down over 20%. And let's see what one of our subscribers did with that. He said, 190% profit in two days. I put on a Whole Foods put trade, which was your bear trade of the week in Market Insights. Today I locked up 190% profit in two days. Consider me a loyal user. We get testimonials like this day in and day out. It's not just people following Mark Chaikin and Market Insights. It's people learning these two patterns. And I'm going to summarize the two patterns in a minute. And if you come away from this webinar having learned these two patterns, you're going to make money for the rest of your life. Fold in those candlestick patterns from Steve Bigelow, and your timing is going to be great. So instead of messing with Whole Foods, which is basically a glorified supermarket company. When the power gauge was bearish back here in February and it was under this trend line, if you like supermarket stocks, you could have been buying Kroger. Kroger is starting to eat Whole Foods lunch. They're buying specialty health food chains. They're starting to feature Whole Food type merchandise in their supermarkets. And the power gauge turned bullish in February, and then the relative strength to the market in late February went from red to green. The market was now agreeing with the model. You could have been selling Whole Foods at 55 on the way to 35 and buying Kroger at 44 on the way to new highs at 58. One of the ways you make money in the stock market is by finding stocks that are going to go from the lower left to the upper right of the chart. Sounds easy, and it is if you've got a plan and a discipline. So we call this the dynamic duo. Now, I know a lot of you think that Kudlow and Kramer are the dynamic duo, but before then, we're Batman and Robin. So what is our dynamic duo? It's the Chaikin power gauge rating telling you what the fundamental potential of a stock is and the Chaikin relative strength, which tells you how that stock is doing 
relative to the market. Now, taken relative strength compares the stock to the market over 26 weeks. It's a red-green indicator, measures the persistency of a stock's performance relative to the S&P. It stands alone as a bullish indicator. Even if the power gauge is neutral, if the relative strength is strong, that may drive you into a stock like Tesla, which is virtually never going to have a bullish power gauge rating because of the valuations. But the combination of taking power gauge rating and relative strength with some timing entry points, whether you use Chaikin signals, candlestick signals from Steve Bigelow, or a combination of the two, is an extremely powerful discipline. It gives you focus. It gives you conviction. You're going to make money in all types of markets. Now, why does relative strength work? Very simple reason. Institutional investors are measured against a benchmark. Typically, it's the S&P 500. If, they're under, if they own stocks that are underperforming that benchmark, what do they do? They cull them out of their portfolios because they're dragging down their compensation and ultimately they lose assets under management. So superior returns come from stocks that are outperforming the market because research has shown, goes back to 1965, a guy named Bob Levy who's also running money to this day, that stocks that have outperformed the market over the previous six months will continue to outperform over the next six months. Now we're going to come back to this at the end of the webinar because I'm going to tell you what stocks you should be focusing on from the long side between now and year end. And it relates to the fact that institutional investors are measured against a benchmark. And I'm going to save the number for you, but it's a staggering number. And you'll see it toward the end of the webinar. The second key to making money in the market is being able to spot personality changes. Now, what is a personality change in the Chaikin methodology? It occurs when a stock that's been outperforming the market starts underperforming the market. In other words, when the relative strength changes color, and I don't have to tell you who we're looking at up on the screen. Here's a young Jack Nicholson, happy as a clam, probably with uh, uh, Veronica Houston or Angelica Houston, and now we see him after they split up. Not a happy guy uh, you know, in the... Uh, movie that scared the pants off of people, but a personality change occurs when our relative strength indicator changes color. It's very powerful when it confirms the power gauge rating, when the market agrees with the model. That's important, and shake and money flow can also be used to confirm that personality change. So these are the two takeaways that I want you to come away from this webinar, that the combination of Chaikin Power gauge rating and relative strength is critical to finding winners and identifying put candidates. And spotting personality changes is the key to being flexible enough to not get stuck in the Whole Foods and the Netflix and the price lines of the world as things change. The worst thing you can do on Wall Street is to put your feet in cement. And by that I mean having an opinion on a stock and not changing it when the world starts to disagree with you. If you can spot these personality changes, and we're going to show them over and over again in the balance of the webinar, you'll know when a stock has changed personality and you'll change course. So part of this Jake and five-step methodology entails playing good defense. Now, playing good defense to me means three things. It means having good money management discipline. So you've got to use stops. We saw with Whole Foods that not every sell signal works out. Two out of three is a great batting average. So you've got to start with a good money management discipline. Second way to play good defense is to take any stock with a bearish power gauge rating and get it out of your portfolio. In your 401k plan, you shouldn't have any stocks with bearish power gauge ratings. If you're trading from the long side, don't trade stocks from the long side with bearish power gauge ratings. Trade stocks from the long side with bullish ratings, and then turn lemons into lemonade by taking stocks with bearish power gauge ratings and buying put options when you get overbought sell signals. So here we're looking at Pandora. The power gauge rating turned bearish in March when the stock was around 32. Wall Street was still enamored with the stock, but it broke our trend. And about two weeks later, it started underperforming the market after outperforming the market. That's the personality change that you must recognize 
in order to make money on Wall Street consistently because now the market is agreeing with the model which is bearish. So you look for sell signals in Chaikin Analytics to position yourself on the short side or with put trades. Now we're going to end the webinar by showing you how to make money using these disciplines during earnings season. Now I know a lot of people are afraid to trade during earnings season and they should be unless you've got an edge and the Chaikin Power Gauge rating gives you an edge. It's like a GPS during earnings season. So how do we use that to turn lemons into lemonade? Well, right before Pandora was due to report earnings, it triggered an overbought sell signal. This is a really simple pattern. The power gauge has to be bearish. The stock has to rally up and make a new eight-day high. I owe that one to Larry Williams. I actually owe a lot to Larry Williams because I based my check and money flow on an original research that he and Joe Granville did. So you go short. You buy put options when you see that sell signal. You're confident that there's a high likelihood of a negative earnings surprise. It's been documented that stocks with a bearish power gauge rating are twice as likely to report a negative earnings surprise. So there's your edge. You can trade that during earnings season. You're turning lemons into lemonade. Here's another example, Yelp. It was on a list of internet stocks that we identified as vulnerable five months ago. Bearish power gauge rating since March. The stock was over 80. Relative strength turned bearish. There's your personality change. The market is now agreeing with the model. It happened again here in October, and you got a sell signal two days ahead of what turned out to be a very disappointing earnings report. This stock gapped down 22%. Now, I don't know about you, but my biggest nightmare used to be waking up, turning on CNBC, and finding out that a stock that I was long was going to gap down because of a negative earnings surprise. That no longer happens to me because I'm following the Chaikin discipline and the Chaikin methodology. In fact, you'll see how that works on the upside to your advantage. Now, one of the other five steps of Chaikin is how to play offense well. In an uptrend, it just means knowing what to buy because it's easy. In a volatile market, in a market that's in a bit of a correction, it also entails knowing how to buy. So let's look at a couple of examples of playing offense well. Well, what I like is a stock in a strong industry group. Large cap biotech stocks in the healthcare sector, very, very strong. Amgen's been a favorite since mid-June when the power gauge turned bullish. The stock was around 120. Look at that shake in money flow, all green, even on the pullbacks, telling you the institutions were buying the stock after that big March-April dip triggered by Janet Yellen, who was really talking about small-cap biotech stocks, but they, in this case, they threw out the baby, the big baby with the bathwater, and every biotech stock sold down. But the institutions came back into the stocks that they wanted to own. Amgen was one of them. And in mid-July, the relative strength went from red to green, and the market was now agreeing with the model. The stock was 128 on its way to 164. And along the way, you had these wonderful signals. In this case, it's a money flow buy signal. Classic example of playing offense well. We had a buy signal two days ago. Amgen was up 1% today. Large cap biotech stocks, as we'll see, are one of the groups you want to buy between now and year end, and I'll explain that at the end of the webinar. Now let's think a little differently. Let's look at the Apple ecosystem. I and mean, we're going to start with Apple. It's been a stock that we've talked about since April when they had a positive earnings surprise. Analysts jumped all over themselves and reversed their bearish opinions. Power gauge turned bullish because of that. About two weeks later, the relative strength to the market turned bullish. Stock was trading at about 81. And it's been a wonderful stock continues to make new highs. Steve talked about Wall Street analysts using the Chaikin analytics methodology, technical department of Fidelity, the Soros hedge fund, and the best hardware analyst in Wall Street, Steve Milanovic from UBS, is using Chaikin analytics. He just raised his price target on Apple from 120 to 130. Analysts are raising their estimates, and you've had buying opportunities along the way. Relative strength is strong. This pullback here in late August when the money flow stayed positive was great. 
even after the iPhone 6 was announced, the pullback from the 102 level was pretty mild given the pullback we had in the market. It stuck right at the lower volatility band. Negative money flow, that was the difference between August and October. And the stock has been on an inexorable course. I had a target of 120 when it broke through 100. Stocks usually go 20% above that figure. I think the target is now 120, 130, and I think it's going to achieve that between now and year end. And you want to buy strong stocks between now and year end. I'm still withholding the why of it because that's going to be your sort of secret insight at the end of this webinar. But now let's look at two stocks that supply Apple. Skyworks Solutions makes semiconductor chips for the iPhone 6, and they also make them for refrigerators and scales and coffee makers. I don't know if I want my scale to know what I'm doing in my refrigerator. It's called the Internet of Things, but Skyworks is right there in the forefront of that, so they're not just dependent on Apple for revenues, but they do have a very strong presence in iPhone 6, and the market knew that. Look at the money flow that came into Skyworks in the June September time period ahead of the iPhone 6 launch. We're going to analyze Skyworks in depth when we look at earnings season, but one thing that I'm going to add to the notion of the market agreeing with the model is that when the market agrees with the model on the upside, and that means relative strength and money flow and the Chaik and Power Gauge rating are all in sync, you get price acceleration to the upside. So you look for an oversold buy signal or a relative strength or a money flow buy signal. And even in this volatile market, you got one on Skyworks right up to the bottom. And the reason is they guided higher. Their business is so strong, they've been telling Wall Street analysts for the last six months, your estimates are too low, raise them. When a company does that, believe them, and this is what happens, the stock made another new high today. These are the stocks you want to buy on weakness between now and year end because they're going to continue to make new highs. Institutions are not going to sell these stocks. They're giving them positive performance, and they're going to try and buy them and add to their positions. Now, here's a very sad story. GTAT was supposed to make sapphire glass for the iPhone 6. It made this double top in the run-up before the iPhone 6 integration. But somebody knew something because look at that selling in late August ahead of the iPhone 6. Well, what people knew was that when the iPhone 6 came out, there was no sapphire glass in there. And now the sellers really pounded the stock. Power gauge rating had been bearish. Money flow told you the institutions were selling ahead of the iPhone 6 launch. And you had a personality change to the downside. Now, I think Steve will uh, recognize an engulfing pattern here on the day after we had a momentum breakdown sell signal. Sadly, this company filed for bankruptcy. If you were following the Chaikin methodology, you would have been out of the stock and you might have been short or loan put options and been very, very happy when they filed for bankruptcy. This chart's about a month old. Uh, the stock no longer trades uh, except with a bankruptcy symbol next to it. This is an example of how Chaikin can keep you out of trouble. It's very powerful. Now, there was also unusual put activity in GTAT, and a lot of the services that monitor options activity spotted this. So in September 9th, right after the new iPhone was introduced, 48,000 puts trade. It's had a bullish power gauge rating since the end of 2013. Stock was trading under 100. It was trading under 90. They saw what the power gauge rating saw, a personality change in December of 13. Relative strength goes bullish. Look at that institutional accumulation. Was that Bill Ackman buying the stock ahead of a takeover bid? I'll bet it was. Taking money flow tracks the elephants. So our gun is bullish. What do you do? Well, to trade more profitably, you follow the signals, just as you do in the blackjack example. Every time you had an oversold buy signal, eight-day low, positive relative strength, you buy the stock. If you bought the stock in October based on that, 
when both Bill Ackman and Valiant said, we may raise our bid from 190 to 200. You were buying the stock at 175. Allergan went out and found their own buyer. They're paying between 215 and 220 for the stock. If you follow the discipline based on proven analytics, you've got conviction. It's a lot better than trading on emotions, and in this case, it was a lot more profitable. Downside, here's Coach. Power Gauge has been bearish for almost a year. It's been underperforming the market. The institutions continue to sell it. How do we know that? Shaken money flow is red. Now, you can get that on any um, brokerage firm platform, Thinkorswim, TradeStation. You can get it on StockCharts.com. We color it red and green to make it easy to interpret. They don't. So Coach is bearish. How do you make money knowing that? Well, you follow the signals. So here's our overbought sell signal. All of these have worked, and you've got another one that just triggered the other day. So a disciplined approach is better than trading on your emotions. Now, when we launched Chaken Analytics in January of 13, people started seeing these signals, and we got immediate feedback. They're great, but how do we know that they've happened? In response to that, we built the dashboard alerts, and you'll see them in the Q&A section when we go live with our desktop app. Every day in any list you're looking at, this is a my stocks list of 100 names that market letter and blog and tweet, much too big for the normal person. You should follow 20 to 30 stocks, get to know them really well, some long, some shorts. But on this day back on 1023 when I was preparing for a webinar, Two stocks stood out. There was the Allergan buy signal at 186, Edwards Scientific, and Triple D, one of the sad 3D printing stocks, triggered two different sell signals. So let's see how those two trades worked out. Well, Edwards had a power gauge that turned bullish in April. The market started, actually agreed with the model. It was outperforming even before that. That's usually not the case. So the market was agreeing with the model, and you had a series of buy signals. Here's that signal that we saw on the alerts dashboard. Edwards went from under 100 to 126 in almost a straight line. And what did Triple D that had a sell signal do? Well, 3D printing is a great growth industry, but 3D is not really handling their acquisitions well. So power gauge turned bearish in January. Stock was 70, rallies up to resistance, sell signal, get out. Market now agrees with the model. Look at the institutions. They're still selling the stock. We made it our bearish stock of the week back in here in late August at 50.7. Pacific Crest, which is a major research firm, had a price target of 32. That really looked extreme. It doesn't look so extreme now with the price trading around 35. It's been as low as 33. Market agrees with the model, and the institutions are selling it. You want to look for an opportunity to buy put options or short the stock. This overbought sell signal came one day ahead of an earnings report, and the stock gap down over 20%. That's what happens if you follow a proven methodology. Now, another one of the five steps in Chaikin is industry group strength. We talked about it right early on. Industry group strength, if you're on the long side, gives you a tailwind. It puts the wind at your back and helps you make profits on the long sides. So how do we find strong sectors and strong industry groups? Well, you go to the list manager in Chaikin Analytics, and you click on Spider Sectors, and you see the nine S&P sectors ranked not by price momentum, the way most people do it, but by the power gauge rating. So again, we're looking under the hood. What are the stocks in that ETF? The XLV, that's top rated now for almost three months. So the first thing I want to do, because this is now telling me healthcare, financials, and technology are where I want to be, is I want to look at a chart of the XLV. We make it easy. You tap on that, there's your one-year chart. It confirms the fact that not only does the power gauge potential of the stocks within that ETF strong, but it's making new highs ahead of the market. And you had a personality change in early August. And as I said, XLV has been the top of the potential list for the last three months, and the market is confirming that. So now I want to find some names to trade. 
And again, we're going to go back uh, to October when we did a webinar. That's the only way I can show you how these things work so well. And I had four, uh, two, four buy signals in the XLV on October 13th. Edwards, we've already looked at. Celgene, we're going to see right now, and Regeneron later on. So here's Celgene. There's where the buy signal came in. Stock was trading around 95, well, actually 93, traded all the way up to 108, just gave a signal, and it's moving back up again. This is the kind of stock you want to be looking at between now and year end. Now, occasionally, if we had done this exercise in September and looked at the alerts dashboard, we would have seen a buy signal in Care Fusion, CFN, oversold buy signal. Stock was 45. Two weeks later, they got a bid from Beckton Dickinson at $58 a share. The stock spiked up 23%. Sometimes, by being disciplined and having a game plan, you get lucky. You get short of GTAT or you get long of care fusion and then you're just a happy chip on the wave making a lot of money because you follow the discipline. Now, our list manager can also help you if you trade index ETFs. So how many of you in the audience trade spiders, triple Qs, IWMs, or sector ETFs? If you do, please type in the box. And I see we've got a lot of people trading index ETFs. So how can Chaikin help you? Well, we have indices. Tap on it. Triple Qs. Look at the personality change in mid-June. It went from underperforming the market to outperforming. Triple Q was 92. It peaked here the other day at close to 104. You've had some relative strength buy signals along the way. If you have the choice between the spiders, the triple Qs, and the IWM small caps, the relative strength is going to guide you into the right area to be in a broad-based index option. On the other hand, here's the Russell 2000 small cap index. Is there anybody on the webinar who would have rather been in the IWM than the triple Qs? I think the answer is pretty clear. You want to be in the broad-based index that's going to make new highs, not one that's going to be stuck in a trading range. So finally, the IWM broke above resistance. But look how fast it turned down. It's been down for a week now. It was up a little bit today. Negative personality change in March. If you've been following this discipline, you would have been out of short caps, small caps, looking for triple Qs or spiders to make your money in index options. Now, this also applies to sector ETFs. So XLE, one of the nine S&P Spider sector ETFs. We looked at XLV, that's healthcare. XLE is energy. Personality change in August went from outperforming the market to underperforming, and we had a relative strength breakdown signal right here in late August. At that point, if you were exposed on the long side to energy, and we know a lot of hedge funds and institutions that were, you would have questioned those long positions. Or you might have gone out and looked for a short sale candidate. And look what you would have found. You would have found Pioneer Natural Resources, a $25 billion market cap company. At its peak, it was $40 billion. And right there, when you had the sell signal in the XLE energy sector, you had two sell signals, relative strength sell signals, on Pioneer. How did they trigger? Because Pioneer was underperforming the market. We know that because relative strength is red, rallied above its 21-day average and dropped back below it. That's a simple, powerful technique. You could have been short PXD above 200, bottomed out here below 160, and it really hasn't gotten going, even though energy is trying to make a move to the upside. Big headlines on CNBC, energy leading the market. Does that look like a market leader to you? This is a chart that I pulled at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Sure, energy was up 1% today, the energy sector. That chart's going nowhere. Now, maybe in three months it's a different story, but for now, don't bottom fish in energy between now and year end. So let's end the webinar with winning plays during earnings season, and we'll recap some of what's just happened. 
but before I do that, I want you to think about these stocks in the context of what I told you about 20 minutes ago. Between now and year end, the big institutional investors are going to be playing catch up. And do you know why? Because one out of seven professional money managers has outperformed their benchmark. Fund managers and professional investors have underperformed the market in 2014. Hedge funds are doing even worse. So what do they do between now and year end? They play catch up. Are they going to do it in stocks making new lows? Absolutely not. They're going to get those stocks out of their portfolios and they're going to focus on stocks like Skyworks and Dr. Pepper and they're going to put those stocks into their portfolios in the hope that they can catch up to the market between now and the end of the year. So you want to look for stocks between now and the end of the year like Skyworks. Buy them on dips. You want the market to be agreeing with the model. So here's our first example of taken during earnings season. In July, I made Skyworks my bullish stock of the week in Chaikin Market Insights. 47 and change. Why? Because they had had a series of positive earnings surprises and they gapped up each time. But more importantly, the power gauge was bullish. It was outperforming the market. Chaikin money flow stayed green on this one-month consolidation. And all I had to do was go to Yahoo Finance to find out that they made chips for iPhone 6. So I made it my bullish stock of the week. They reported a positive earnings surprise. And by the way, they had pre-warned to the upside in June, and Wall Street paid no attention to it. Exactly what they did here in mid-October. The stock spiked up to 54, and we got this testimonial. I'm thrilled that I got the heads up to go long Skyworks before earnings the first week I subscribed to the service. That trade paid for my entire yearly subscription. Thanks and compliments on a user-friendly app. I recommended it on July 17th. This person made over $10,000 between July 17th and July 21st. Now let's look at a more recent example. Netflix, bearish power gauge rating. It was outperforming the market, but it was under its long-term trend line. And we tweeted on this stock and said, sell this stock ahead of the earnings report. Why? Because we had gotten an overbought sell signal on a bearish power gauge stock. Disappointing quarter, the stock dropped 100 points. People who bought put options made 50 times on their money. And in case you think 100 point drops are rare, I'm telling you they're not. Because two years ago when I was on CNBC Fast Money Halftime Report, I told people to get out of Priceline which was due to report earnings the next day. This is August of 2012 because it had a bearish power gauge. It was under its trend line, the exact same pattern that Netflix had, but it was also underperforming the market. They disappointed, and the stock dropped 100 points. And people made 23 times on puts in just one day. Now, I said in the beginning, patterns repeat on Wall Street. Guess what? Priceline did it again two years later. Two days before the earnings were due out here in late got an overbought sell signal under the trend line, bearish power gauge, underperforming the market. Guess what? Priceline dropped 100 points. It's now rallied. It's barely filled the gap, and we'll see what happens to Priceline. But this is an example of patterns repeating and how you can make money using Chaikin Analytics during earnings season, don't be afraid of earnings season. It's your friend when you've got a GPS to tell you where to be and what to do. So let's look at Regeneron, which was one of those buy signals on the healthcare dashboard. Gave a buy signal in the middle of that waterfall decline at 343. That was a tough one because the stock bottomed out at 320. So I'm not quite sure how I would have handled that as a trader. But that buy signal looks pretty good with the stock making new highs up here at 420. And along the way, I made it my bullish stock of the week right before earnings were due out. And they sandbagged a little because they came in on target, but they guided a little bit lower in their range. And the stock dropped from 396 all the way to 368 
but the institutional buying is so powerful in this biotech stock that it went from 368 to a new high and you'll see in a minute how we help people know that so what I like to do is look at stocks that are going to report earnings in the coming week so I prepared this calendar even though the weeks almost over of stocks that reported this week Agilent on Monday Dixon Medtronics on Tuesday Lowe's Best Buy today and Foot Locker tomorrow Let's look at two of those stocks. Lowe's had a bullish power gauge rating, was outperforming the market, reported better than expected earnings, and it spiked up five points yesterday, continued up more than half of one percent today. Jaken can help you in earnings season. You can buy that stock ahead of the earnings report. Best Buy reported this morning before the opening. Power gauge was bullish. Relative strength was strong. Electronics retailers, supposedly Amazon has put them out of business. Doesn't look like that if you're looking at this chart. And look what happened at Best Buy today after the earnings were reported. Up 7% when I drew this chart. Making a new high for the move and finally filling that gap from last January. Jaken can help you during earnings season. Now here's Foot Locker's chart. Foot Locker reports tomorrow before the opening. Power gauge is bullish. It's been outperforming the market. Likelihood is a positive earnings surprise and a nice spike up. This is a stock that I would have bought yesterday or today ahead of the earnings report. It was up one and a half, one and a quarter percent today ahead of the earnings report. You'll find out what happens tomorrow on the opening. So let's look at two final examples. What stocks have moved in the last two weeks? Fast-moving stocks where Chaikin had you on the right side of that stock before the move. Brocade, one of my favorite networking stocks, was one of my stocks of the year for 2014. It's been pretty volatile. What happened? You had a momentum breakout about two weeks ago, and this stock has gone from 1070 all the way to 1160. So Chaikin got you into that stock based on power gauge, relative strength, and very strong accumulation ahead of that move. Now on the downside, TripAdvisor is a stock where you had a sell signal. I'm sorry, I've got a very, very finicky mouse. Had a sell signal ahead of their earnings report. Bearish power gauge, negative relative strength. Money flow was terrible. And guess what? Negative earnings surprise, and this stock dropped 20% and it keeps going lower. The stock is going nowhere. It's part of that internet group like Yelp that are in trouble. Alibaba is attracting all the money. These other stocks are tired and they're making new lows. Do not bottom fish in these stocks between now and year end. Find the Dr. Peppers, the Skyworks, the Amgens of the world, the Regenerons. Buy them on dips. That's what the institutions are going to be doing. That's what you should be doing. So uh, that ends the educational part of the webinar, and obviously I feel very passionate about Chaikin Analytics. I came out of retirement. I, I sold my first company to Reuters, which was a technical analysis workstation for institutions. After 08, I decided I wanted to build something for the individual trader and investor, so we started Chaikin Analytics and built this 20-factor model. Chaikin Analytics for iPad and desktop normally sells for $1,950 a year. As a special to the Candlestick community, and we've done this before, we have over 60 Candlestick forum users who've subscribed to Chaikin Analytics based on webinar specials. And we love you guys, and I know a lot of you are on today. Webinar special, we take $400 off. $1,550 is the price. Just go to our website, chaikinanalytics.com, backslash sign up, type in the offer code Bigelow, or contact Dan Franz, danf at chaikinanalytics.com, or 1877myportfolio. Now, if you want to start investing and trading smarter, subscribe to Chaikin Analytics now. You're going to get $600 in added value. It's an immediate return on your capital. $400 off the annual subscription. A complimentary subscription to Chaikin Power Suite, and you'll see some of those products in the live demo. That's worth almost $200 a year. We give you free one-on-one -on -one tutorials. We have over 800 subscribers to the system, and every one of them has been offered 
and most of them have accepted a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. It's important that you know what's there. We support this product for you. You know what's there, we get you set up, what the features are, and then we also have a new service. It's twice a month, subscriber-only open forums. You can call in on GoToMeeting, you can ask questions, you can hear other people's questions. One of our two or three um, Chaken experts will be on that call. It could be me, it could be my son Eric, could be our new market strategist, John Schlitz, who comes on board on Monday, who's just a fabulous technician and knows Chaken inside and out. And you get our weekly market insights newsletter with a featured bearish or bullish stock of the week and strong and weak industry groups. Now, how valuable is market insights? Well, here's an excerpt from Market Insights on November 2nd. I made Regeneron my bullish stock of the week at 393.72. They were due to report earnings on Tuesday. I really expected a positive earnings surprise. So what did I say? Buy Regeneron ahead of Tuesday morning's earnings report, looking for a positive earnings surprise to propel the stock to new highs above 410. Well, the fact is they met, they met analyst estimates but they guided to the lower end of the range, and Wall Street is so jumpy that the stock traded down to 368. So the call options that I bought, the weekly calls, I actually was lucky to get out of them, and I lost 75% of my money. But for someone who took a longer view, we saw what happened to Regeneron. That stock traded up close to 420 today, and it's basically two weeks later. So stocks that we feature in Market Insights tend to have staying power on both the long and the short side. So here's an example of someone who followed an Amazon short trade last April. Testimonial said, I followed your Amazon trade, great trade, profit covered next year's total cost of our two months in Hawaii after taxes. My wife thanks you and I thank you, RW. And anybody who's been to Hawaii lately knows that uh, two months in Hawaii costs a hell of a lot more than $1,550. And RW is now investing in Chaken Analytics. He's becoming one of our investors around. So that's someone who's a true believer and an evangelist. And you can do this too. You don't have to follow a guru, Mark Chaken, Jim Cramer, whoever you think has some insight, because none of us really do. We're just following a discipline. You can do this. We teach you how to do this yourself. So one final testimonial, and then we'll get to the live Q&A and demo. Amazing results, five for five. Lululemon, Alcoa, Skyworks, ServiceNow, Demandware. Three of them were short sales, two were longs. I just closed out Demandware for a 14% profit this morning. I've only been a member for a couple of months, and I've already paid for your annual membership fees several times over on just these five stocks. This came in in July. Thank you for your solid advice. So if you subscribe in the next 72 hours to Chaken Analytics, you get $400 off, so you pay only $1,550. You get all these other services with that. You've got to subscribe by Sunday, November 23rd. Again, ChakenAnalytics.com backslash sign up. Offer code is Bigelow or DanF at ChakenAnalytics.com. And with that, I'd like to thank you all. We're going to go to Q&A mode. Steve Bigelow is going to curate it. And again, uh, thank you, Steve, for the opportunity to present and try and educate the Candlestick Forum community. And let's get into a very lively Q&A session. We're going to go to our desktop app, and you'll be able to ask questions about any stock and see the Chaken Analytics chart right on the screen. I don't want. We do we want this. There we go. We're in uh, desktop mode. Once we get rid of that pesky little um, I apologize for this. I've just shifted to the Mac and I'm still uh, somebody running. wants there we to go. Say, take a look at S N S S. S S. So NAPCO Security, not a stock I know well, but we're going to get an immediate read on that. C. Is that what we wanted? Or 
I don't see an NSS. I see an NSSC. Do you want to read that symbol to me again, please, Steve? S-N-S-S. Sam, Nancy, there we go. Sam, Sam. Got it. So here we're looking at a pharmaceutical company. Power gauge has been bearish since late March. The stock was trading at about six dollars. Um, you had a big gap down. I assume that there was some sort of negative um, FDA announcement. Uh, the power gauge basically would have said back here, if you follow our discipline, get out of this stock at six. It went sideways. It actually gave a relative strength buy signal here, which worked for a few days. But the bottom line is. Bearish power gauge ratings underperforming the market are stocks you want to avoid. Now, I'm, I'm, this is a small right, cap stock. It. Let's check the market cap on $130 million market cap. All right, we got Google L, G-O-O-G-L. So let's take a look at Google. Power gauge has, was bullish and all the way running up to 620, turned bearish in early August with the stock at about 570, um, had a personality change, relative strength went negative, you had a sell signal here, it's a relative strength sell signal. Alibaba has stolen a lot of thunder from Amazon and Google. This is a stock that I would not be trading from the long side between now and year end. You're going to see a lot of people who tell you it's cheap. Um, ad rates are coming down. Other people are using different search engines. Microsoft has, uh, Yahoo has yet another search engine that they're using. So uh, my bottom line here on Google is stay away from this stock. All right, uh, American Express, AXP. Well, AXP is interesting because they've entered into an agreement with Apple Pay, which tells you that they're a little bit more forward thinking than you would expect from a stodgy credit card company. But uh, the, the power gauge had been bearish, and the stock waterfall down here in um, October, it turned bullish briefly at the end of October uh, here in the 92 level. Uh, it's still underperforming the market. I'm going to is a stock I don't want to be in. If I want to be in the credit card group, I want to be in Visa, uh, which had a fabulous earnings report. So let's see what the chart on Visa looks like. Wrapped up when they reported earnings, and they've just kept going. As soon as the analyst caught on board, the power gauge turned bullish uh, at about 238 and the stock is traded above 250. Now, if I want to see what Google does, what can I do here? I click here, and I can bring up a power gauge report on Visa. I said Google because we can give you reports on 5,000 stocks instantaneously. This is a little less than instantaneous. We've got a lot of devices. Okay. Is connected to this network down here. So you can get a report on Visa or any stock that you're looking at, four-page PDF uh, report. TSO. The Soro is one of my favorite stocks. It's one of the refining stocks that has really led the market higher. It's one of the only energy names that you should have been in, and you're going to see the reason why in a minute. Bullish power gauge rating. Going back, how far do you think, Steve? All the way back to mid-April. So with the whole energy complex suffering, yeah, the Soro at a price of about 56 gave you a bullish uh, power gauge rating, had a personality change in June, started outperforming the market, and look what the institutions were doing. Now, did you have any candle sig uh, signals on this one, Steve? I think this is a stock you've actually mentioned in your chat room. Yeah, we just recommended this one uh, yesterday or today. Because if you miss the first move over the past few weeks, we're coming out of a slow curve, J-hook pattern, and it just broke out of that today. So we're looking at uh, wave one over the last past few weeks prior to this J-hook, wave three being the same magnitude. 
So here's your oversold buy signal, and this is why I started the webinar by saying that the candlestick forum techniques and Chaikin are so compatible. Remember that word conviction. If you get a recommendation from Steve Bigelow and the power gauge rating is bullish and you're outperforming the market and that J-hook pattern comes in, you've had an oversold buy signal, you're going to be filled with conviction. You're going to take that trade. You're not going to waver, and I know most of Steve's trades work out very, very well. So here's an example of Chaikin and Candlestick converging, and that's the power of this Chaikin Analytics workstation. All right, let's take a look at Facebook, FB. Yeah, Facebook is um, not our finest moment because Facebook is a controversial stock these days. So the power gauge has been both bearish and bullish. It was bearish in here in the March to July time framework when the stock was going sideways. It actually was bullish right at the end of 13 when the stock moved from 50 all the way up to 75. And it turned bullish again here in late September. The problem I have with Facebook is the same problem I have with Google. Ad rates are coming down. So even though this stock has a lot of accumulation, it's been outperforming the market, I think Alibaba has sucked a lot of money out of the computer and social media stocks. And you're seeing that in Yelp. You're seeing it in Amazon, Google, and so forth. So Facebook would not be a stock that I'd be focusing on here. Uh, I, I think that it's very hard to make money in the social stocks between now and year end. Alibaba raised $10 billion today in a debt offering. I mean, this company is like a behemoth. And that makes it tough to make money in a stock like Facebook where their subscriber count, their user count is not growing, and they're dependent on ad revenues, and ad revenue rates are coming down. All right, another chart Before we go to the somewhat next stock, like, uh, yep. Yep. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, another stock that we have that looks, uh, looks like uh, Tesoro, uh, but a smaller cap, is a DYAX. DAX is Daxor, um, not a company I know well, so let's see what the power gauge is. Yeah, D-Y-A-X. Yep. It's D-Y-A-X. Okay, now, now we're in. Diax. Drug stock. Power gauge just turned bullish this week, had been bearish all through this period. It started outperforming the market in August. Remember I said that the relative strength indicator stands on its own. Even though the power gauge is neutral, when this stock starts outperforming the market at $10 and the money flow shows that the institutions are active in the stock, you want to look for an opportunity to buy that stock, and the, the opportunity will be in a, a relative strength buy signal. So let's see if we got a relative strength buy signal. Yep, we got one here in October. Why? Okay, because the uh, relative strength was positive. It traded under its 21-day average and then moved above. Uh, this was another one that had a J-hook pattern after uh, well, your first or your uh, furthest to the right arrow is down there. Our, that's our fry pan bottom, which broke out. And then what we call the classic pattern is the fry pan bottom, which break out, creates a very strong price move. Then you get some consolidation, and then you start the next wave, which we call the J-hook pattern. So the classic is a fry pan bottom, strong price move, uh, profit taking, and then the continuation of that price move. So uh, that one is kind of along the same lines as Tesoro. Uh, did you do Apple earlier, AAPL? Well, let's take a look at Apple. Apple is in my stocks list. I want to show two other features of the system that we referred to on the webinar, Steve. So I've got 100 or so stocks that I follow. Again, that's too many stocks for you to follow, but I write a market letter and do webinars like this, so I need a big stable of stocks to work with. So Apple is in that list. Uh, they come up. The list comes up ranked by Chaikin Power Gauge rating. So Apple is in there, and 
everything looks great on Apple. You just have to find a comfortable spot to get into it. It's not pulling back at all. And so we haven't had a, an oversold buy signal because the stock hasn't been oversold since October. We have oversold buy signals here in August. I yeah, think the stock is fabulous. The institutions are, uh, uh, yeah. What are you seeing in this stock, Steve? Yeah. Oh, just about a week uh, ago, you had the J-hook pattern after a strong price move. So that's a perfect area to enter a trade because we wouldn't buy it four days earlier when it was heading straight up, but we would buy it after the J-hook pattern shows up because that tells you there's going to be new strength coming into that stock. So you're not buying buying at the high. And the shaken power gauge gives you the courage and the convictions. Before we go on to the next stock, I mentioned that I follow over 100 stocks. How can you possibly analyze 100 stocks? Well, you click on Port Health Check, can you get an instant analysis of those hundred stocks through the lens of the power gauge rating? First, we zero in on the very weak stocks. Normally, this is instantaneous, but we've got a lot of uh, things connected to the internet tonight. So this finds the bearish stocks in this portfolio: Adobe, Athena Health, and zeroes in on them. It shows you which stocks had a bullish power gauge rating change and which had bearish. It tells you which which stocks are going to report earnings this week. Very important. And then finally, we have a power grid. And the key to making money on Wall Street is to be long the stocks in the upper All right. right. Let's take These a look at FedEx. Stocks the and strong industry groups. Uh, FedEx is a stock that's got a bullish power gauge rating. And it's a favorite. Uh, FedEx, FDX. Yep, it's been the air, it's in the air transportation group. It's had a bullish rating for quite some time. Been making new highs. So the power gauge turned bullish in early July at a price of around 150. Stock has been outperforming the market. Institutions were sellers in here through October, but they're now aggressive buyers of the stock. So this stock is a stock that I'd want to try and buy on weakness. To have you seen a pattern here, Steve, that you like? Oh, I haven't been following uh, FedEx. Let me take a look over here. FedEx has been moving sideways, which could create a sideways uh, J-hook pattern. But on a short-term basis, today it did a bullish engulfing signal after a hammer doji. So it's like a left-right combo, which is a strong bully signal. I may not have uh, recommended it here for the last few weeks, but I would put a buy stop at somewhere around, looks like about 73.50. If it comes up through there, the next wave is, uh, is going to be starting to the upside. Also, stochastic. Steve, before we go on to the, yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Before we go on to the next stock, this is in a very strong group, the air transportation group. So we can click on that and see all the other stock transportation ranked by the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. So here we see uh, Southwest Air near the top of the list. We see Delta. We see Hawaiian Air. We see UAL. So this is a way you can get ideas. If you're looking at FedEx, and now you see that Delta has a bullish rating, started to outperform again. When the market made a V-shaped bottom, the stock just came roaring out of it. Uh, my preference is Southwest Air. As I mentioned, uh, it's had a much uh, smoother uptrend, not as deep a decline. But you can find an industry group to a FedEx or a Southwest Air just by clicking on the group name. Right, and right now, if I was looking at a Southwest chart, it's still in a sideways mode. I would put a buy stop at somewhere around 39.70. That if it came back up through those tops, that means wave three is in progress. So this this one's looking like it's still consolidating, but still consolidating in an upward trend. All right, let's just do a few more. Uh, so yeah, I'll try to pick out some of the biggies that people have been following. Uh, uh, I had one here, just 
a second ago. Oh, Baba. Did you take a look at Baba? Well, we, uh, we, we can't have a power gauge rating until we yeah, have my, a year's worth of data. So can't be much help here. Yes, yeah, that's uh, true. It's pulled back to the 21-day average today. They, they made the bond offering. Um, we're not going to be much help on that. But let me put up a couple of names that I think people yep. should be looking at between now and year end. Haynes Brands, very mundane right. company. Legs, made in form bra. Look at this wonderful chart. The institutions, the Japanese who are buying U.S. equities, they're looking for stocks like this. Stock made a new high today outperforming the market, the institutions are buyers, great earnings. This is a stock you want to be looking at. Another name, similar quality, Johnson & Johnson. Very mundane name, largest diversified healthcare company in the world. This has got a good dividend. The institutions are looking for stocks like this. These are the stocks that, in my opinion, are going to lead the market to new highs. And finally, Bed Bath & Beyond, which uh, is a bit of a turnaround. There are some aggressive activist hedge funds who think this company is worth more dead than alive that are trying to encourage them to do a private equity sale. But I like this chart pattern. It came off the base. I'll let you analyze the chart pattern because I think you're better at this than anybody, Steve. What do you see here? Oh, this one was a nice breakout back on about no or October, let's say October 30th where it did a bullish engulfing yep, signal right at that little top. And when it went through there, it was still very strong candlestick signals, kind of a, a, a doji sandwich, which implied there was going to be more upside after it broke through that resistance level. So this one, all you can see is you stay long until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line, the 8 exponential moving average. And that's, that's quite a few of these kind of steady eddy uh, type uh, situations. You just stay long until you see a sell signal. Right now there's no uh, nothing in, in Bed Bath & Beyond that would tell you that you want to be selling this right now. And you had had this bullish personality change back here in mid-September. So everything is kicked in on this stock, and I think these are the stocks that are going to lead the market to new highs. So with that, Steve, I think I'm going to let you wrap up. Uh, I know you've been you become quite a fan of Chaken Analytics, but I'm not going to put words in your mouth. I'm going to let you wrap it up for your audience. Okay, well, great. Mark, thank you once again. And everybody, this is, uh, Mark has developed uh, the indicators that back in the, oh, my younger days, I kept thinking to myself, if I could figure out how to put a bunch of indicators together that all work in the same manner, that if I could look at X number, of them, whether it's 7, 10, 15, 30, 80, and the majority of them are working, then I know I've got a, uh, a, a stock that's moving in the right direction. And so Mark has pretty much done that. And as you've seen with his institutional followings, um, his indicators are very well, uh, what do I say, very well refined as far as performing in the right direction when you add up a a bunch of them, and you can see that his information is just, again, pure common sense that if everything is working in the right direction, uh, your, your, your positioning is going to be in the right direction. So with that, Mark, thank you very much. Um, the reason we like to have Mark on is because his research is top of the line. This is, uh, this is the type of accumulative information that will greatly improve uh, positioning yourself in the right place at the right time. So with that, Mark, thank you, and thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. Now go out and shovel Steve, the snow, thank and you we'll very see much. everybody have a, in the have chat a good room. good Thanksgiving, everybody.